Coming up next on MASL Primetime, Ian Bennett and the Milwaukee Wave were looking pretty as the champs launched their title defense, but the goalies were showing they've got just as much offensive punch as the forwards, case in point. San Diego Soccer's all-time scoring leader, Craig Childs, joins me to talk about his career and the start his squad has had this year. And two new teams made their debut in week two. We've got all the coverage for you. Coming up next on MASL Primetime. This is MASL Prime Time. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Alex Bastiavansky, and there was a ton of excitement last weekend in the Major Arena Soccer League as two new teams made their debut on the schedule. Now, one hails from the great state of Texas, the other from a much more northern climate, and let's start with that team today. The Rochester Lancers, who really had a, a baptism by fire last Friday in their MASL debut, as they faced powerful in-state rivals, Utica City. Now call it the I-90 Derby, call it the Battle of New York. These two cities are just two hours down the road from each other and should have an intense rivalry for years to come. The Rock Dome was packed in the Flower City as the Lancers kicked off their MASL season. Game highlights in this segment are brought to you by Mitre. Mitre is the official soccer ball of the Major Arena Soccer League. And the Lancers last played in the MASL back in 2015. They took some time off, but are back, and the fans were pumped for their first game. Over 3,000 at the Rock Dome. Unfortunately, Utica decided to spoil the party. Just 207 in Moises Gonzalez. Uh, this guy had quite the weekend. Rips it home to open the scoring. One zip, UC FC. Just 30 seconds later, they make it two. Yudos Momic on the doorstep bangs it in to make it a two goal advantage for Utica. Late in the first quarter, though, the Lancers get their first tally of their reborn MASL existence. Matt Damico cutting the deficit in half. It's 2 1. Second quarter, duck for cover. If you're a Rochester fan, this thing got ugly. Gonzalez, the sweet little header at the side of the net. Second of the day for Moses, that makes it 3-1. Soon after, Christian Segura plays the bounce off the boards and smacks it past Christian Eposito. 4-1 uh, for the visitors. Just over three minutes later, Rochester can't clear it away. Momic burns them. His second of the day. Everyone was getting in on the act. 5-2 uh, City, that's when Moises Gonzalez really took control. He already had two goals at this point. Boy, did he add to that total. This was the nicest crushing it past Esposito and then uh, soon after he victimizes the keeper again to make it 7-1. So the day didn't quite go Rochester's way obviously but they still uh, were in great spirits despite the blowout. Soccer Sam thanking fans after the game. Utica defender Jake Schindler had some advice for the Lancers. Uh, it's not going to come overnight. You know, listen to Doug. Doug's probably played a thousand indoor games in his life. Uh, he's going to be your best teacher. Uh, look to your veterans and watch a lot of film. San Diego visiting Tacoma and the Stars started with a bang. He's going to lob this ball forward for Ramos. Ramos flicks it past Porto and scores! Mike Ramos with the first goal of the Tacoma Stars 2019-2020 season. And Ramos getting it started for Tacoma, but the Sockers get it back off a fluky one. The ball ricocheting off two Tacoma players and ouch. Uh, Travis Pittman getting credit for it, 1-1. Craig Childs will be our Skype guest later in the show. He had a game. Second quarter, Childs, the one-time perfection to beat Danny Waltman. Uh, his first goal of the season, but he soon had a second off a sweet solo effort here, dancing past two defenders. The finish. He makes it 3-1. San Diego, and you knew last season's MASL MVP Nick Pereira would get involved. How's that for a finish? Nice volley. 3-2. Second half, newly acquired Slava Yuba Paripovic 
paying off already, making it a two-goal San Diego advantage. Fourth quarter, Brandon Escoto, first-team MASL All-Star last year, makes it 6-3. I had finished his 7-3 as the Sockers getting back on track after dropping their opener. Tacoma's Nick Pereira, not concerned though. He knows his squad will uh, eventually shake off the early season rust. The reality is it's the first game of a very long season and uh, every team in this, in this league is struggling in their first games. So it's just about getting back on the field, getting ourselves confident and going after it again. Okay, let's take a look at the MASL points leaders through two weeks of play and Edgar Gonzalez continues to lead the way from the Monterey Flash, followed by Kristen Segura, uh, Miguel Vaca, who had a tremendous week too, Brian Aguilar, Adrian Gutierrez, and Damian Garcia rounding out your MASL top scores after two weeks. Hey, welcome back to MASL Prime Time. We head to the Lone Star State now, where the Dallas Sidekicks have had the Metroplex area to themselves since 2012, but this season will have some company. A new franchise is set up just 30 minutes to the south, and they'll be spicing up the local soccer scene. The Mesquite Outlaws made their debut last weekend, and who better to do it against than their local rivals and coached by arena soccer legend Antonio Carlos Pecorari, better known as Tattoo, the Outlaws, sent a message loud and clear to the rest of the league that they'll be a competitive force right off the bat. The Battle of the Lone Star State, another good crowd, nearly 3,500 on hand to see the Outlaws make their MASL debut. A great atmosphere at Mesquite Arena as their coach, Tattoo, is going up against his old team, the Sidekicks, but Dallas draws for his blood just a buck 25 in. Cameron Brown right on the doorstep. Puts on the rebound, uh, one zip sidekicks, but Mesquite can always say their first goal in franchise history was a beauty. Jorge Deleon packing some TNT in that right boot. Beautiful. Eight minutes later, it's Deleon again. Another free kick. This one, though, deflected up over and in. Uh, not as pretty, but 2 1 for the expansion side. Second quarter, they continue to press Jamie Lovegrove, the love machine taps it in from in close. Outlaws up 3-1. The bounces were going Mesquite's way as well. Sean David taps in another deflection right on the doorstep. That made it 4-1 for the Outlaws. A successful debut for sure as uh, they take the Dallas Derby by a 7-5 count over their Texas rivals. The KC Comets hosting the St. Louis Ambush in KC's season debut. All Comets early on, too many chances for men close here. And finally, Matt Lewis tickles the twine to make it one zip for KC and the 4,500 on hand were loving it. Late in the quarter, John Sosa with the free kick decides to have out of himself, smart move. Tucks it right under the bar, beauty. Two nil Comets, second quarter, they extend their lead. Kyle Williams with the nifty header to Ray Lee. KC looking like a world beater early on as they jump out to the 3-0 lead. Uh, second half of play, KC up 5-1 at this point. Tony Walls squeezes it in short side on Steven Hammerski to make it uh, a three-goal deficit. And then in the fourth quarter, they make a game of it. Beautiful pass off the boards from Diego Bobadilla. Uh, Douglas Dos Santos bumps it home to draw the ambush within two goals with uh, lots of time left. And it goes four minutes later though. Paulo Nascimento makes a massive stop here, but it ends up at the feet of Leo Gibson, and Leo doesn't miss those. MASL third team all-star last season was Leo, and he is an absolute sniper from in close. But the goal of the week belongs to the keeper, Nascimento. Are you kidding me? From another area code, that pulls St. Lou to within two, but that's as close as they get. And after the game, Leo Gibson had a message for the big opening night crowd. I just want to say thank you. Uh, the stadium looked great. The attendance was fantastic. We hope our performance was was welcoming. And we look forward to seeing it for the rest of the season. Well, the Dallas Sidekicks may have been wishing there was a mercy rule in place last weekend in Monterey to take on the Flash, uh, the calm before the storm. This was all Monterey. 32 seconds in. Miguel Vaca getting things going uh, off the rebound, puts it home. 
Uh, 1-0 Monterey. Late in the quarter, Vaca, watch the sick 1v1 display here. Twists the defender into a pretzel, then finishes what he started. Wow. 2 nothing flash. Unfortunately for Dallas, it got much, much worse. Eduardo Gray back for Edgar Flores, making it 3 nothing Monterey. And with the score, 4 zip, Brian Aguilar gets in on the fun. Nice bicycle kick right there at the side of the net. And it's 5 nothing Monterey flash. Back a one ups him though, five minutes later. Watch the sweet little scissor kick to put the flash up by a touchdown at that point. 6 nothing. Uh, Dallas got one and only one actually late in the fourth quarter. Victor Alamendariz down the wing. He will snap the shutouts. Ah, uh, boy, oh boy. 14 to one, Monterey. Your final though. Let's go to the vault now for an old arena game from 1987. The MISL a championship game featuring Tacoma and the Dallas sidekicks in front of a huge crowd at the Tacoma Dome. Uh, this game was insane. The Stars led 3-1 with just over two minutes remaining. They could all but taste the champagne when Dallas stunned them. Arena legend tattoo, tying it up in the dying seconds to send it to overtime. And then uh, the current Mesquite Outlaws head coach sticking a dagger through their hearts in OT with the golden goal. Unbelievable stuff. What a game. I love the hairstyles as much as the goals in that one. Okay, let's take a quick look now at the MASL goal leaders through two weeks of play. And continuing to lead the way is Edgar Gonzalez, a red hot start, 10 goals, uh, followed by Christian Seguera of UCFC, uh, Miguel Vaca, who had a great week for the flash, Brian Aguilar, lots of Monterey players in there. Juan Rojo and uh, Moises Gonzalez of UCFC. Hey, welcome back to MASL Primetime. One of the most successful organizations in the history of arena soccer is San Diego. And over its history, the Soccers have won a mind-boggling 14 championship titles, and they look to be right in the thick of the battle once again this season. Joining me now to talk about the team is Soccers forward Craig Childs, live from San Diego via Skype. Craig, uh, thanks for taking the time today. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you guys for having me, and I'm uh, excited to jump on. And we got to get him out of here soon because he's off the train with the boys. So we'll get right into it. Before we take a look at this season, though, let's take a look back at last year. Uh, you guys, I mean, I think you had an incredible season. You lost just one regular season game. Uh, you went on a 23-match win streak at one point that unfortunately was snapped at the worst possible time uh, in the playoff semifinals against Monterey. But, uh, I mean, just give us your thoughts on your team's play last year. Yeah, honestly, when you look back on it, we had a great year. You know, it was bittersweet and it hurt us uh, in that last game. And it's hard to still talk about, but on and off the field, you know, the organization had a lot of success. We won, we won a lot of games and we won a lot of really close games at the end. And, and we had the little Landon Donovan push with ticket sales and marketing. And um, all in all, you know, it was a super positive year for the organization. We're disappointed. We didn't you know, achieve our goal at the end of the year. But, um, you know, that's how indoor soccer works. And, and we're back at it again for another season. And through two weeks, uh, you're one and one. You picked up your first win against uh, longtime rivals Tacoma in your second game. Dropped your opener against the Cal Express, though, at home, which I think shocked a lot of people. Uh, but let's just talk about uh, what some of the positives are you've seen so far from the team and uh, what the squad needs to work on. Yeah, honestly, you know, we still have a very talented team. Uh, we're returning most of our players. You know, we added um, a couple very, very good players like Slav and, and Ariaga and um, Diego, backup bully for Boris. And, you know, it's the same system. It's like, hey, guys, you know, we've added a few players. We still got the, the core group. And um, it's really about our mentality and showing up correctly and, and taking each game seriously. And I think... We didn't take Turlock serious enough, and it was a learning experience and a wake-up call for us. And uh, and it woke us up, and we took Tacoma very seriously, and I think we put on a pretty good performance that night. You definitely did, yeah. Uh, midfielder Brandon Escoto is coming off a monster 55-point season that saw him uh, named as a first-team MASL All-Star. He's off to another great start this year. Uh, talk about Brandon and what makes him such a special player for you guys. You know, honestly, Brandon is a, a true talent. Uh, 
you can't coach players like Brandon up from a younger age. It's very difficult. He has this this intuition and technical ability to take players on. This craftiness, this savviness. Uh, he's a very, very good player. He's still young and, and he's learning the game a little bit, but he's getting better and better and better every season. And you know, he's the future of the San Diego Soccer's. And um, with him at the helm of the attack, the future is bright. Yeah, Boris Pardo. Uh, let's talk about him for a moment. He's the reigning MASL goalie of the year. Uh, last season you had, I was looking at your schedule, you had a ton of one-goal victories that Boris obviously was a huge factor in. Uh, he's your rock between the posts back there. How much does that help you guys psychologically knowing he's back there for you? Yeah, for sure. Having Boris uh, in between the sticks is is a big boat of confidence and we know you know that he's going to be that anchor in the back that's going to bail us out a couple times a game and that's going to help us start the attack building out of the back you know not only is boris a fantastic shot blocker and goalkeeper but you know his feet are great he plays in our practice at target forward sometimes and and honestly um his ability to help us play out of the back and and break down pressure is just as important as his ability to make those critical saves here and there and I think Boris against Tacoma was was outstanding and uh, he's building off of the the great year that he had the year um, previous. Yeah I saw some of the saves against Tacoma real sharp stuff uh, before we go I should point out you had a huge year last season you finished second in team scoring you're actually first this year on the squad I wanted to ask you you're a San Diego boy born and raised uh, the all-time leading scorer for the Sockers what's it like to lead your hometown team uh, and an organization, really, that's just got such storied history. You know what? It's it's surreal. Um, and it's something maybe I'll look back on 20 or 30 years and have a better grasp or understanding of how this all came together. You know, honestly, I was a little kid here that enjoyed soccer, and I loved outdoor and indoor. Um, and, and then I look back on, on my career, and... It's hard to pinpoint exactly how it all unraveled the way it did. You know, I enjoy playing here. I enjoy the coaching staff and in the organization, and I'm having fun. And, and you know, I've been fortunate enough in my career to not pick up any major injuries and to play with very, very good players. And, and you know, it's I'm excited to be out here rolling the dice again for another championship with a very good group of, uh, of guys. And I'm extremely happy with the San Diego Soccers and the direction of the club. Well, you guys are a lot of fun to watch, and I mean, I love seeing your home games because you've got some of the best crowd support in the league. It's a lot of fun. you got to get to training. I don't want you to get yelled at by the coach, so get out of here. But thank you so much for joining us, and uh, cool. we'll talk to you next time. Thanks so much. Thank you guys for having me. Okay, more MSL Prime Time coming up. Here's Giles. He scores! Kegelato! Craig Giles! Welcome back to MASL Primetime. It was seven months ago that the Milwaukee Wave officially became the top dogs of the MASL. On its home turf, the Wave took down the Monterey Flash in front of over 8,000 diehard fans to capture the Ron Newman Cup. Now this season, the Hunter will become the Hunted. Milwaukee will undoubtedly have a big old bullseye on its chest as it tries to repeat as MASL champs. And the quest for a repeat began last weekend in St. Louis. Highlights in this segment are brought to you by Sports Resource Group, SRG, building walls that bring people together. It was the ambush hosting the wave, and St. Lou draws first blood, 531 into the second quarter. Philippe Silva, give and go, takes the return feed and slots at home. And the ambush lead the champs by a one nothing count. Incredibly, Milwaukee was held off the score sheet until the second half. Uh, Mauricio Lete rips it past Paul Nassimento to even it up at one apiece. And then it's the Canadian assassin, Ian Bennett, going to work. Second team, MASL All-Star last year. And uh, watch this one. Oh, baby. Rips it top shelf past the keeper on a rope. Uh, fourth quarter, wave up 3-1 at this point. Luan Oliveira, the energizer bunny that just keeps on going and going. Slices and dices the ambush to bits. What a rush. 4-1. Uh, back to Mr. Bennett now. Ted goes wide, and then Paulo falls down. Bennett reconvenes. 
Trying to shot down, bites a kick, he scores! Are you kidding me? Ian Bennett putting on a show. You know, you'll see that again in the plays of the week. The Wave were actually up 7-1 when JT Thomas hammers one top shelf uh, to make it a 7-2 game. That's as close as St. Louis got. Heck of a shot, though. Uh, after the game, Wave defender and St. Louis native Chad Vandergriff talked about what his team did to get things going when they were down 1 0 early on. We started off a little slow. St. Louis was fast, so we had to get our, get our breath and get up to the game speed. But we needed to keep the ball more um, and have more possession. It was too up and down. So once we were moving off the ball and keeping possession, I think we, we started playing our game a little more. Okay, Rochester played its second game last weekend against Harrisburg, and the Heat took it to them. With Harrisburg up 1 0, though, Rafa Godo smashes the one timer past the keeper to tie it up at one apiece. Fortunately for them, it was all downhill from there. Elton de Oliveira tapping it on uh, the goal line here to make it 2 1, and then Dominic Francis really putting on a show. Tattoos it past Christian Esposito, and then he plays the pretty ricochet off the boards and makes it. 4-1 uh, for Harrisburg. Second half, they just kept on coming. Francis crosses for Julian Escobar and yeah, just made it over the line. Daniel Villela with the howitzer past the keeper to make it 7-1. And with the score 10-1, Michael Cunningham crushes a beauty into the top corner uh, for the Lancers. Nice one, but uh, too little, too late on this day. Again, though, the big crowd was just Really loving the return of the team to the MASL despite the 12-3 blowout. They know the squad is still getting its feet wet. Let's check out the MASL Naughty Boy list for last week. And Sonora's Javier Doram was given a red card in week one in their contest against Monterey. And uh, he served a one-game suspension uh, for the infraction for the foul. And then a little shot to the back of the head there. Liam Callahan of Utica City. Received a one-game suspension for this slide uh, against Baltimore. Right into the keeper, studs up, a bit too enthusiastic. And he received a one-game suspension on December 4th. The team of the week for week two. And uh, it's led once again by Edgar Gonzalez of the Monterey Flash. Followed by Moises Gonzalez, Miguel Vaca, Dom Francis, uh, Damian Garcia, and Andrew Coughlin and our primetime player last week it was Edgar Gonzalez this week it's Moises Gonzalez of Utica City uh, he only played one game in week two but he was a one-man wrecking crew the sniper had four goals plus a helper against Rochester as they dropped the Lancers by a nine to one count last weekend and we look at our plays of the week now uh, starting with number five reigning MESL MVP Nick Pereira the scintillating volley against San Diego. Beautiful. Uh, number four, Miguel Vaca of Monterey had a huge week for the flash, capped by that gorgeous scissor kick against Dallas. Uh, number three, Luan Oliveira of Milwaukee. Quick feed here. Just keeps going and going. Shreds St. Louis and route to ripping it past the keeper, Nascimento. Uh, number two, his teammate, Ian Bennett, gets up on his bike. And oh, that is just so pretty. Uh, but this week, number one belongs to a goalie who thought he was a forward, Paul Nascimento against Kansas City, tattooing that shot bar down. Just gorgeous. That is our play of the week. And that's going to wrap things up for today. But, uh, of course, we'll be back right here next week. And a reminder, MASLsoccer.com is your home base for all things in the major arena soccer league. And there's all kinds of other social media to keep you up to date as well. Thank you so much for watching MASL Primetime. We'll see you next time.